Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a fun technique featuring the emboss resist technique using Zig Clean Color Markers. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to do this technique. First, you're going to need some Zig Clean Color Markers or any kind of watercolor or water-based markers that can be used as watercolors. The colors that I grabbed here are Persian Green, Turquoise Green, Deep Green, Green, and Violet. Then I'm also going to be using a Niji water brush just to spread some of the paint around. The stamp set I'm going to use today is the Simply the Best stamp set and I am using this flourish with the flower on the end. Then you're going to need some cardstock and I'm going to recommend that you use the Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock or any good quality watercolor cardstock. This will work a lot better if you're using a cardstock that is geared toward watercoloring than just a plain stampers cardstock. Then I'm going to use some Versamark ink, some of the Gina K Designs fine detail clear powder. I'm also going to use a heat tool and I'm going to be using my embossing magic pad. You can also use the EK Success powder tool that we're carrying now. Either one will work just fine. Then I also have a Distress Sprayer. This is just a water bottle filled with water. If you already have one, you don't need to go out and buy anything special, but this is the one that I've been using and I've been enjoying it a lot. The other thing that you're going to need is some paper towels. So I just have a few regular old paper towels just folded up here. So to begin, you're going to use some of these clean color markers and you're just going to scribble color wherever you want. Now the thing about these markers is they're so vibrant and I like to lay down lots of color. And you can see I'm not doing it in any particular pattern or order. I'm just kind of putting color down wherever. But I want this to be nice and bright. I'm going to use some of this um, turquoise green next. Oh, look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? And then when I'm all done doing this technique, I am going to cut this down a little bit so I'm not too worried about if the edges aren't completely covered with color. But these markers are really fun. Now I've also seen this technique done with distress markers. So that will work. Also the Tombow markers will work or maybe even Peerless watercolors or some good watercolor paint. I'm going to add some deep green. Now I'm going to recommend if you're doing this technique that you stick with colors that are very, very, very vibrant and maybe even a little bit on the dark side. So you can see that these colors are kind of darker. They're not the real pastel ones. And this one is just the regular green. So we'll add some of that in there. That's a really pretty green. All right, and then the last color I have here is Persian green. And that's pretty dark. I like that. Okay. You can always go back and add more color, which I might. I was doing that quite a bit when I was making my card sample, just trying to get the right amount of color onto my piece of paper. Okay. So now the next step is to add a little bit of water and I'm going to spritz some on with my water bottle, just a light mist. And then I'm going to use my water brush to kind of blend some of that out. Looks like quite a mess right now, doesn't it? Oh, but look how vibrant they get when they get wet. That is so pretty. Thank you. 
So I'm just kind of squeezing this water brush as I go to add a little bit of extra water into the mix. And then if you want a different kind of blend, you want things to run a little bit, you can go back and spritz it a little bit more. And you can kind of help it by turning it and letting the colors kind of run together. But that is really pretty. All right. Okay, so now my next step is, I'm just gonna clean up this extra water here. My next step is going to be to dry this piece of cardstock. Now, if you don't want to do this step, you could just wait a little bit and let it air dry and then you can get back to it. But because we have a video to do, I'm going to use my heat tool and just help it along a little bit and get it to dry up. When you're using the heat tool, even if you let it heat up a little bit first, you still will get a little bit of warping on the cardstock. And then to combat that, once it's dry on the front, I'm going to just dry it from the back too. And that'll kind of change the direction of the warp a little bit and get it to be a little bit flatter. Now, I happened to watch a great video one time by Christina Warner, and I saw that she actually taped her cardstock down to, I don't know if it was a butcher block or a cutting board or something, but I need to pick up a a wood cutting board so I can do that and I think that will make a difference but you can see if I turn it over it'll start curling up and then if I turn it over it'll start curling the other way so you can get it fairly flat but I really like that cutting board idea just to tape it down with painters tape or some kind of low tack tape I didn't have time to pick something like that up today so but that was a great tip she had. I think Jennifer McGuire also did that, and um, both of those ladies are so talented. You can find great videos on both of their YouTube channels. Okay, so this is getting pretty dry, and you can see it's kind of, uh, it lightens up just a little bit once you dry it completely. Okay, so the last time I did a technique like this, a lot of you were watching, and as I was going along, you were thinking, uh-oh, Gina, this doesn't look like anything, and you're going to get that same feeling when I start the next step. You're going to say, uh-oh, this isn't going to go anywhere. I don't like the way this looks, but when you see it all done, I think you'll like it. Okay, so now I'm straightening this out just a little bit. And I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and I'm going to rub that over the surface of the card just in case there's any little spots on there. I usually put a little lotion on before I do my videos and sometimes that can just create an area on your card where the embossing powder wants to stick even though there's not any Versamark. Okay. So now I have this stamp and you can see it's very well loved. It's a little bit stained. But that doesn't matter. It's nice and clean, so that's not going to cause a problem. All right, so I'm inking this up really well with Versamark for my first impression. And when I do something like this and I can't see real well, sometimes I like to use the embossing powder as I go. So I'm going to stamp this first one. I'm going to hold that down for just, just a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to use some of this fine detail clear powder and I'm going to add the powder onto that area that I just used the Versamark on. So there, now you can see that pretty little flourish there. And I did that because it's really hard for me to see where the Versamark is and I really don't want to overlap my design. So if I do it as I go along, I'm going to be able to see. If you emboss it first though, it makes it harder to see again because it turns clear and unless you've got the light hitting it the right way, it is more difficult to see. So I'll do the next one here, like that. 
this. And again, a little more powder. You can see what's happening there. I love this. It looks a little bit hippie-ish to me with all that watercolor in there. Do another one. All right, we'll do that one right here. I really want to grab some of that purple and trap that underneath. That purple is so pretty. Now I have three. Let me get some of my powder back in here. All right. And I'm going to add one or two more. I really want to get that purple, that flower, right over this purple part here. I don't want to lose the depth of that one. It's so pretty. All right. And there's one more, and I'll bring some up through this area here. And we'll do one right here. Okay, and there we go. So five is good. It's usually good to do odd numbers of things, whether it's embellishments or images. Those odd numbers seem to feel much more balanced. Okay, so I'm going to close this up now, and I'm going to emboss all of those images. And so you're going to see it all start to disappear and look like nothing again. And you're going to say, Gina, that looks awful. It was looking so cool and it was kind of white. And you don't want to overdo this, overcook it, because you don't want to burn the embossing powder. Okay. So, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that little bit of shine in there, right? Okay. So now we're going to give that just a minute to cool. And then the next step is to grab that piece of paper towel. And now we're going to spray water all over this and really, really wet it. So. Okay. Now I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to blot on top of it. Can you see what's happening now? The images are starting to shine through. Do that again. I really want to pull that color off now. And can you see how the color is caught underneath the embossed areas? And that watercolor, once you activate it again with water, starts to pull off of the cardstock. And what's left behind are those beautiful images trapped under that watercolor. Isn't that fun? And the more you pull off, the more vibrant your design is going to be. Okay, my paper towel's getting a little bit ratty. But you can see what's happening there now. You can see all of those beautiful designs coming through. So let me show you my finished card project that I made using a piece just like this. Let me make sure I don't have any water on the table anymore because I don't want to ruin my card. So here is the card that I made using that same technique. And you can see once it dries everything lightens up a little bit. And what I've done here is I've added the thank you greeting from the, I believe it's the Made with Love, I'm sorry, I should have, I should have looked at that. I believe it's the Made with Love um, stamp TV kit that we had way back. 
And then um, I did my layering with the stacker's circles dies, where I used the silver stacker, then the inverted stacker, then the purple stacker, and then the scallop stacker on the outside to create that little beaded edge and my thank you greeting. And I used some pop dots to put that up, or the uh, foam squares by Scrapbook Adhesives. Then I used the double scalloped border die to add a little bit of a border on the side and our new Flutterby Butterfly die from Gina K Designs. So that is a nice way to use a piece of that background paper just using a greeting and maybe a little bit of accent so that really your eye is drawn to what's going on in the background. So that is my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more inspirational, creative projects right here at StampTV.com. Thanks so much for watching.